Also, one doctor's provocative theory that the smartphone just might be the future of medicine. And he explains why to fellow physician Nancy Snyder. Are we close to using this to say, I'm going to, di I'm going to diagnose you? You can do blood tests, saliva tests, urine tests through your phone. This is a powerful device. Welcome back in our next story here tonight. We're about to hear one of the world's top physicians say the smartphone may change his profession and personal medical care in ways none of us saw coming. His story tonight from Dr. Nancy Snyderman. Why do we have people being treated like cattle herd? That's waste. And the billions of dollars that's being wasted each year for screening and the wrong drugs and the wrong everything. It's astounding. And we just can't go on like this. Yeah, I'll take that. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Dr. Eric Topol has long been one of the world's foremost cardiologists. Hey, great to see you. He has now become the foremost expert in the exploding field of wireless medicine. And this explosion, he says, is about to make our health care better and cheaper. Watch what he does with a cell phone. And we'll just pop this iPhone into it like that. He shows how simply his modified iPhone produces a cardiogram for a patient. So you got, you just put your fingers on that, there you go. And in a second, wow. you know, in the first second, then it stabilizes. There it is. The device was approved by the FDA in December and is now sold to physicians for $199. Topol tells his patient he just saved a $100 technician's fee. So are we close to using this to say, I'm going to, diag I'm going to diagnose you and prescribe four or five apps? instead of four or five medications? Well, these days I'm actually prescribing a lot more apps than I am medications. You can take the phone and make it uh, a lab on a chip. You can do blood tests, saliva tests, urine tests, all kinds of things, sweat tests through your phone. This is a powerful device. And we'll just have you, why don't you just hold that on there like that? Topol's patient, Ron Thompson, is dealing with several significant heart issues. You saw that on a phone, D didn't you just, weren't you just amazed the first time you saw that? Yeah, absolutely. I'm used to having an ECG machine hooked up to me and put all these, you know, all shaving my chest and sticking, you know, stick them on there and putting the electrodes or whatever. But yeah, no, this is incredible. Topol also uses a portable ultrasound, a V-scan to image Ron's heart. So, get a good window. Oh, there's the aorta, and you see it is I dilated. Sure the V-scan is made by GE, a parent company of NBC. Can you see that? See how strong that is coming together? He does in the office what would normally be a separate test costing $800. There's 20 million, over 20 million echocardiograms done a year. So 20 million times $800, that's a lot of money. Probably 70, 80 percent we can get rid of just by having this part of the physical exam. I was surprised when you saw, Ron, that the technology did not get in the way of the doctor-patient relationship. Actually, well, I think it, it helps make the whole interaction much more intimate because now I'm sharing the results in real time. There's so much technology now that we could, by using the digital uh, structure that exists today, that we could make the office visit uh, an enjoyable thing. And not only that, Nancy, but it doesn't have to be in person. There's no reason why a lot of office visits, if not most, could be done remotely. Ron could take his EKG at home, send, send, yes. and oh, boom, yeah. you have be it. Looking at, we'd be looking at it together. Or if I got him a wireless ultrasound and he just puts it right there and I just say, okay, take a deep breath, I could be watching it in real time. I mean, anything that we do can be done remotely. When Topol came to Scripps in San Diego from Cleveland, he started a new chapter in his life. When you moved here in 2006, you had just left the Cleveland Clinic under not very happy circumstances. Right. He had a reputation for brashness. Well, he had questioned the safety of the hugely different. profitable painkiller Vioxx there, there and eventually forced it off the market. I resigned from that after having been there 14 years. It was a significant part of my career. Do you think, wow, I've done a really great job making health care better. Or do you think, damn, there's so much yet to do? I feel the, the, the damn, there's still much, so much to do problem. I feel that big time. Do you, do you ever think about how you're going to die? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, sometimes my, you know, I watched my mother die at a very young age, in her early 50s, with 
a leukemia. Then my father was an end-stage diabetic. I mean, he went blind at age 49. Topol uses DNA testing and monitoring to pinpoint his specific vulnerabilities and guide his daily life. He refuses to use elevators, and his day is spent walking from building to building. He incorporates an hour of exercise into virtually every day, no matter how busy, trying to live the life he thinks we'll all be living in the near future. How did you find out about that? At lunch, we pulled out what we were told is one of his weaknesses, tortilla chips. Will you partake? Oh, yeah, it's hard to resist. Okay, come on. Handful. They are loaded with carbohydrates, which trigger glucose. Yeah, this is, this is, uh, this is my guilty pleasure here. So, out comes his cell phone. I mean, I can look at my glucose every minute. I, I don't want to look at it every minute, but I can. And so I can just turn it on, my glucose. Fortunately, I haven't had enough chips here yet, but it's, only, it's 107. How does it know that? Well, it has a, I have a sensor on. Where? And uh, Well, I have it on my abdomen, but I'll show you what it looks like. It's uh, like that, touching the skin. Okay. So that sends a wireless signal to this. Yes. And if you were a diabetic and you had this, you could then send this message to your physician or to your own computer. Oh, yeah. And you could start to see triggers and trends and follow this. Sure. Oh, yeah. And there goes the lifestyle change. You got it. Eric Topol is a man who looks way over the horizon. And everywhere he looks, he sees a cell phone. In the future, let's assume I have heart disease. What could this tell me about impending trouble? Well, we're working on a project that will take a nanosensor in the bloodstream that is smaller than a grain of sand, and it will, it will pick up a signal when you have cells that are coming off shed from the, into the bloodstream, coming off from the artery lining, which is a precursor to a heart attack. And then you will get on your phone a special heart attack ringtone, which will warn you within the week or two weeks that you are very liable to have a heart attack. I know it sounds a little invasive, putting this little tiny, small in a grain of sand in your blood, but what that will do of having your body under continuous surveillance, talking to your phone, that's the future of medicine. And so this is their heart rate. This is his newest passion, the Visi Mobile Wrist Monitor. Topol was involved in its development. Everything a hospital intensive care unit now monitors, this does wirelessly. So if my 90-year-old father is discharged from the hospital, it's conceivable he could go home with something like this and a doctor could monitor him remotely? Absolutely. His book lays out how the digital revolution will create better health care. You write in your book that medicine is currently set up to be maximally imprecise. Yeah, medicine today is about as much wasteful as one can imagine. So let's just take drugs in this country, prescription drugs, 350 billion a year, a third of which is total waste. We're giving a drug that doesn't work. In fact, even worse than that, we're giving drugs that backfire with side effects. So that's a hundred billion plus just from the prescription medications. And then what about mass screening? Every woman should have a mammogram every year, colonoscopies, PSAs. It's really medicine dumbed down. It's treating all human beings the same. That's crazy. Well, each of us are, are truly unique in, in every way. What does the patient of tomorrow look like? Yeah, the patient of tomorrow is the biggest switch. People need to take ownership. They need to seize the moment and seize the data. The new medicine is um, plugged in to you. It's understanding you, which we've never really done before, and you drive it. You've got data and you've got information that you never had before. Wouldn't you like that information? Most people would. And wouldn't you like to be helping to call the shots? Fascinating story. Our thanks to Drs. Topol and Snyderman for that. Up next here tonight, it's